And remember, in the middle of the storm, your heart should have the assurance and the confidence of God's presence in your life. Do not allow anyone or anything to raise doubt of God's presence or to diminish your trust in Him. Good morning, I am Pastor Carlos Rios, and this is our devotional mana, a daily adventure with God. The best way you can support this space of devotional mana is by sharing it. Share it with family members, friends. Tell them to subscribe to the devotional. They can go to YouTube and seek devotional mana, where they'll find the page where they can subscribe and they will receive the devotional daily without need for anyone to send it to them. So this way they can receive it on their own and they can also access the chat where they can write to us and make comments or simply say hello. There's also a small button that says thanks. And you can press this button to say thank you as well as make a donation if it's the wish to do so in your heart. And so I hope this week that we've spoken about the storm has been edifying for your life. Let's see how this beautiful story ends. Because today we'll be talking about that fourth anchor for our lives. And this fourth anchor is to understand that there are always promises on behalf of God for each moment, each instant. Did you know that in the Bible, the words do not fear appear 365 times? This means that there is a do not fear for each day of your life and that God has a do not fear for your heart each day. And in the same way, when there are storms, drop your anchor, hold fast, but hold fast to who you need to hold fast and you will overcome. And so how does the story of the Apostle Paul end while they were out at sea during the storm? We are reading chapter 28 of the book of Acts. The first thing we'll say this morning is that in the midst of storms, God will raise up even people whom we do not know to help us. The truth is that life with God is an adventure. And this is why we call the devotion mana a daily adventure. Because when we have God, God surprises us. There's something that calls my attention here in this chapter 28, verse 2 of the book of Acts. When they arrived to the island after such a storm and having lost absolutely everything. Look at the detail in verse 2. It says, the islanders showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. And so look at how beautiful these words are here in this verse because it says that when they arrived at this island, look at the condition they were in and it says that they treated them with unusual kindness. Do you know what the Bible says? It says that God will place people in our path who we do not know and they will seek our favor. And the Bible also tells us that wherever we go, God will give us friends. He will open doors for us. He will place people who will help us, even if we have done absolutely nothing to earn it. And this is called God's grace over someone. Through my life as a pastor, I've heard many testimonies, beautiful testimonies, of people who trusted and believed God. They said, look, pastor, I went to another country where I was received and I met an angel that opened doors for me, that helped me, even though I did not know them. Someone else said to me, I went to another country where I needed to have medical treatment and I knew no one. And you should see what happened from the moment I arrived in the airport without even speaking the language. Someone received me. Such person was my caretaker. They took me to the clinic. They spoke for me and took care of me to the point where everything was taken care of. I am constantly hearing testimonies of God's good hand, caring for his children, placing angels, key people, kind people, people who speak up for them, people who pay bills for them, people who host them in their homes without barely knowing them. And what can we call this? This is God's favor for us, with us. And here it says that these islanders treated them with unusual kindness. And because it was raining and it was very cold, it says that they went and lit a big fire that invited all of those who were on the boat to warm up God's love. And this is what happens during difficult times, during storms. And this is why I say to Christians, do not be afraid 
When you're going through difficult times, through the storms, do not be in a rush to say, God, remove these trying times from me. Take away this problem, resolve, from, resolve this for me. Now, do not be in a rush to say this, to do this, but instead, live the moment. Because in these moments, during the harshest treatments and trials, is when you will be able to meet the best people the most wonderful people, and you will see miracles. You will see facets of God that you did not know before. And this is why we cannot fear difficulties, problems, or difficult times. Simply allow God to take charge and do what he needs to do. Allow God to teach you what you must learn. But when God surrounds you with these people, when you find people who are friendly to you, even though you do not even know them, people who help you, people who give to you, then learn the lesson. Because what this means is that tomorrow, you and I will have to be hosts. Tomorrow, we will, need, we will not need to know someone in order to help them, to treat them well, with, with kindness, to accompany them somewhere, to accompany them. Do you know what scripture says? It says, do not tell someone to go and come back tomorrow when you have something to give them. Because my dear family, being merciful is about doing things correctly for God's glory. So are you with me? This first point is very important. What happens during storms? Well, God raises up people who perhaps I do not even know that will help me. And after this lesson is in my heart, then I will be ready and willing to help someone else, even if I too do not know them. Secondly, in this same chapter 28 of the book of Acts, we'll find that God will protect us of all evil. Let's look at what it says in verse 6. Do you recall when the viper fastened on to Paul's arm? And of course, here it says, the people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said, he was a god. Tremendous, no? Now, what does this point number two teach me this morning? Well, that God's power is greater than everything, than anything. Who can prevent the venom of a serpent not to cause harm to a person? But when God is with me, the Bible says, you would drink things that are deadly and they will not cause you harm. The Lord tells us that in the midst of this, whatever situation we are living, He will guard us and protect us. God is our shield. The Bible says that He is our protector. The Bible says that you and I are hidden in Christ, that He is our city of refuge, that we are hidden in the arms of, these, of this wonderful and eternal God. This is what Scripture says. In the midst of the storm, no matter what is happening in your life, know that God is powerful to keep you safe. And why? Because God has the last word. And so what did the islanders do? Well, as we said yesterday, the first thing they thought was, no, this is a bad man whom justice has caught up to. He thought he was saved after the event and the ship, and look, now the serpent is going to kill him. This must be an evil man. But now, they changed their opinion completely. And so do you see why there's no need for us to influence people to speak well of us? Because God will take care of that. If you did what was good, if you did things well, don't worry, there's no need for you to defend yourself. God will make those around you change their opinion. And this is what is our following point, point number three. The third point of this anchor that we are studying this morning is that those who have pointed fingers at you will have to change their opinions. Look, the same people who in the previous point said that Paul was a murderer, that they expected his hand to swell up and for him to fall over dead. Now they had all changed their opinion of him. So what should be the task of a Christian? The task of a Christian should be to care for his or her character, to be a clean person, an honest person. And if you are, do not worry. God will take care of your reputation. Isn't this what happened with Joseph? When Joseph was sold, he was taken to the home of Potiphar. And everything that Joseph did, the Lord prospered it, blessed it. Well, his master was very busy because he was very powerful and would not be home often. 
and because he tended to the matters of the house, it says that her, his wife, the master's wife, placed her sights on Joseph. And it says that she looked for him. She chased him. But Joseph knew what he needed to do. So for Joseph, it wasn't about a sexual relationship or taking advantage of this opportunity, this moment. No, Joseph said to the woman, your husband has trusted me. And in his trust, he told me that the only thing I could not touch in this home was his wife. And I am not going to sin, not towards my master and much less against my God. And remember the story tells us that one day he left his clothing in her hands because she ripped them from his body and he ran. And this led to him being imprisoned unjustly. But one day he was released to become the second most important man in Egypt. And do you know why? Because those of a clean heart will see God. Because when we do things right, we simply allow God to carry out his justice. Because sooner or later, God will make my justice shine like the sun of the midday, says Psalm 37. If you did things right with a righteous heart, if you acted for God, allow this very God that you serve to give you the reward and give you the position that you will have put you in the right place at the right time. There are people who say, well, it's not fair. I've been treated this way. But don't worry. The Bible tells us that God's just judgment will always be fulfilled. And so here is the great lesson. Paul didn't need to do anything. God himself cleaned Paul's reputation and showed the rest of the people here that Paul was a man of God. And the following point talking about this anchor, point number four was, or is that this island that they arrived, where they arrived, to them was simply an island where they were shipwrecked. But instead, this island became an opportunity. Look at what it says in verse 10 of this Acts chapter 28. It says, They honored us in many ways, and when we were ready to sail, they furnished us with the supplies we needed. Paul arrived to Malta as a prisoner after the storm had caused them to wreck. And after having lost everything, he prays. He prays this very day for the principle of this island to be healed. And this is what happened, as it says in verse 8. And so here we see God's favor through Paul. And verse 9 tells us that even others who were sick came to Paul and they were healed. And so what did they do afterwards as gratitude? Because Paul had brought all these miracles for them. Well, then we see God's favor reflected because they gave Paul and the others everything they needed for their trip to Rome. And so now we are able to understand why in chapter 27 that we read earlier this week, it says that it was necessary for Paul to arrive to an island. This island of Malta was not an accident in Paul's trip, in Paul's journey. It was in God's agenda. It wasn't the storm that led them to Malta, but instead God's powerful hand. This island of Malta was in God's plans. And so when you see things falling out of control, and when you see your life at risk, know that God's hand perhaps is conducing, conducting your ship, your life, in order for you to fulfill a higher purpose. When you look around you in your life and all you can see is darkness, look up and see the light in heaven and know that you will find God even in darkness and that he is directing your life to the center of his sovereign will. God's miracle it's, is on its way towards you and where you may see as a difficulty. For God, it is an opportunity. It's a saying that sometimes uh, us as human beings have such a short vision and we cannot understand God's plan or God's mind. But oftentimes when we see something, we are not able to interpret the reality. One day, a man arrived to a meeting on a wheelchair and all of those who were in that meeting were Christians and they all approached him to pray for him because they wanted him to be able to walk, to get up and walk. But after they prayed, everyone was surprised because he himself, this man, was praying as well. And so the, the man began to speak and said, thank you all for praying for me. And I know that people see me in this wheelchair 
and they are inspired to pray for me, for me to get up and walk. But I want to tell you, I was dead. I was lost in drugs and alcohol, and I had an accident. But the day I had this accident where I almost lost my life, someone shared with me. They spoke to me of God's love, and so I gave my life to Christ as my Lord and Savior. Today I preach the gospel, and I want to tell you, this wheelchair, this condition, is what allowed me to come to know my Savior. And today my life is worth something because of Him. So it doesn't matter if I am in this chair, because I know that my life is used by God to save many, many hearts. My dear family, oftentimes storms interpreted from a human point of view lead us to question and say, why? For what reason? Why me? Why so much pain? Why so much suffering? Why so much affliction? But God has a purpose and God will lead you to fulfill a plan. And I want this to take place in your life. So be very attentive. St stay with us because next week we will begin a new series. We will talk about our lives and the plans that we need to develop in order to reach, to achieve a life of blessing. Tomorrow, in our time of prayer, I'm going to pray for you, for those who are facing a storm. Through our YouTube channel, write to us today. Answer the following question. How many doors has God opened up for you? Through the storm, in the midst of the storm, where has he taken you to fulfill a plan and a purpose? Thank you, God, because you love me. Thank you, God, because even though I may not understand humanly the things that happen around me, but today, when I see Paul, what he did, what he went through, why you brought him here, the plan he fulfilled, today I know that you have a purpose for me. Use me. Thank you for opening up your, my eyes of understanding and for filling me with your Holy Spirit. We commend ourselves to you and we ask for your blessing in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. And I await for you tomorrow in our Friday of prayer in Mana. Blessings to all.